Hi, this is Neil Davidson. Welcome to another tutorial here at avforums.tv. In this episode, we're going to have a look at a modern AV receiver, look at some of the typical features, and look at some of the connectivity on the back of the unit so you can understand where to plug in what devices. A modern AV receiver is as much about video as audio, and what we look for is a number of features to make it easy for us to use audio and video devices. The first thing that's pretty common on almost every AV receiver is an input selector and a volume knob. The use of those is pretty self-explanatory. But what can also be quite convenient is a set of sockets on the front of the device. On this Pioneer, we have some video sockets, also some audio sockets to enable us to plug in a camcorder or a game console. This is a fairly typical feature of most AV receivers. The back of a modern AV receiver can be a pretty frightening place. There are so many connections and options that you can use. We'll try and explain using this Pioneer what some of the most typical options are though. First of all, as we already said, a modern AV receiver is as much about video as audio. And on this Pioneer, we can see that we have a number of HDMI inputs and two HDMI outputs. Moving over, we find that we have a number of optical digital inputs and coaxial digital inputs. Now there are still a number of devices such as CD players, games consoles, etc. that will use these inputs. Along the top we have component video, so analog component video inputs. Now these days component video uh, is considered a legacy format along with all of these S-Video and coaxial connectors. We find that most people don't actually use all of these connectors anymore. Um, they're simply there to support older devices. The next thing that we have is a number of analog inputs. So these are stereo analog inputs. These can be very useful again if you have a very high quality CD player where you prefer to use the, the analog output of that device rather than the digital input. This Pioneer also has a built-in tuner, that's a radio module, and you can see here connections for hooking up the radio. The final thing that we have on all AV receivers are the speaker binding posts, and on this Pioneer it's very straightforward. We have seven speaker binding pairs, a positive and a negative, one pair for each speaker. Again, that's fairly typical of most AV receivers. One of the features that's becoming more common on these modern AV receivers is a LAN port. This LAN port allows you to connect up the AV receiver onto your computer network, either for control of the AV receiver or to allow you to stream your digital music uh, from your PC. One of the other things, a very nice feature about this Pioneer, this is more for the pro market, uh, but people can also find the use for this in their home, is an RS-232C this is used actually to control the Pioneer with a programmable remote control. You can see that the Pioneer actually has another couple of jacks on the back of it here. These are triggers and then some other control jacks. These allow you to connect up uh, other amplifiers or to control other devices such as your DVD player or CD player when the AV receiver is switched on. And again, the RS-232 port allows you to connect up to a programmable remote control system. As we've already said, the back of an AV receiver can be a daunting place. What we've done now is we've got a new Denon AV receiver to show the difference in connectors that can be on the back of them. Now, it looks as though this Denon is extremely packed, but in fact the connectors are fairly similar to what we've already discussed. Here we have HDMI along the top, then we have digital audio, then we have legacy video, stereo analog audio, speaker binding posts, and as you can see we have a lot of them on this turn on, and then finally we have RS-232 control, some control jacks with triggers, and then finally here is our Ethernet port or our LAN port to allow us to stream music from our PC. A modern AV receiver is the heart of the home cinema system. It switches your audio, your video, 
It streams music from your PC, it controls the volume, and it also allows you to support loads of new features, such as the new high def audio codecs, DTS Master Audio and Dolby True HD, um, and it also allows you to support all of the high def video formats, 1080p24 and 1080p60, etc., will all be supported by these new AV processors. It's very important not to get too frightened by an AV receiver. We've already shown you that they typically have loads of connectors on the back of them. The reason they have so many connectors is to make it very flexible and easy for you to set up your home cinema system and have everything switching through one device to make it nice and easy for you and the rest of your family to control. If you take your time, you'll find it nice and easy, very logical to set up your AV receiver. And this is the key component that's going to bring the enjoyment into your system.